Hello, hello, everyone. How you doing? How you feeling? Uh, we're here today uh, with this project showcase with Aiden Watkins from DNEX. Uh, DNEX is an NFT um, marketplace, or you know, <laughs> I'm gonna let our guest explain it. Aiden, welcome. Yeah. How you feeling? Thank you, Algria. It's good to be here. It's great to be here, actually. Um, I've been a long time fan of the the well community and, and what you guys have got going on. Found it super interesting. I think I actually stumbled upon well when I was looking uh, looking into social tokens a little bit and I saw that you guys were one of the more prominent ones. I guess I don't know if you would even consider it a social token anymore, but um, but I, I found it super interesting and sort of looked into it a little bit more and thought, holy cow, this is a pretty awesome community. So. Um, so yeah, I've been, been watching a bunch about Will, but, uh, but our project, uh, DNX is basically trying to be the maximally decentralized, open, customizable, multi-option, multi-faceted, um, multi-channel NFT exchange. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there, I guess there's a lot to dive into within that statement, but, um, but the real, the real focus for us is, uh, is decentralization and sort of custom customization within the exchange process. I think there's a lot of stones that haven't been turned for um, how exchange happens in NFTs. And I think there's a lot of a lot of options and avenues that we can explore with respect to that. So cool, cool. I know that um, you were on a, on a maybe in, a, in the same clubhouse uh room that whale shark was in and then he he invited you over that is that how it went down almost no he actually uh followed us on on twitter after we were we were sort of tweeting out some some content um one of our uh actually one of our community members was looking for sort of a short condensed list of some of the the highlights of uh of nft influencers and so we put together a uh, a tweet and thought it, you know, thought it'd be kind of informative for a lot of the people joining our community recently have been DeFi people that are sort of just getting into the NFT space and sort of trying to navigate it, I guess. And, uh, and so we thought it'd be a good tool to sort of put out there. And, uh, and then we tagged him as just sort of like a cool investment, you know, staying on the, the edge of what the market looks like. And obviously, you know, the whale wallet is the, the gold standard for understanding what the good NFTs out there are um, to hold on to. So. Uh, we tagged him. He followed us back, and I, I messaged him. I had actually been trying to get in touch for a couple of weeks. Uh, I was at the the town hall a couple of weeks ago, asking some questions in there, and sort of getting to know even more what, what the whale community looks like and what you guys were trying to achieve. And uh, and we connected and and hit it off from there. And, uh, it's a really really solid guy, really helpful guy, and uh, it's just been awesome. It's been been very warm and welcoming. So thank you. Appreciate that. Awesome. Well, um, he, he definitely knows how to identify uh, uh, um, good projects and things that are that are going to have some actual utility. That's kind of one of the, the ways that he, he bases on what to collect. He bases his, his way on collecting. Um, and he definitely saw a, a need for, for your type of product and, 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 it, and it has the potential to be huge. Um, one of the main things and problems with NFTs is the um, the, the necessary liquidity for for kind of like for a, a huge marketplace to open up so um if we can dive right into that and tell us what you guys are doing and what it, what are the possibilities going to be for 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 everyone here that, that owns nfts already yeah yeah 100 percent um maybe i can start i guess with a little bit of background on how we came to the idea that probably helps understand i guess how we how we we really got here and where we're trying to go but um, initially sure. we were, yeah, initially we were looking into, um, I guess, I guess we were looking into DeFi opportunities and NFT opportunities, sort of just exploring. And, you know, what I like to do is when I'm learning about new stuff, I like to just sort of come up with ideas as I go and sort of ask people what the issues are and figure out problems and solutions and sort of just, just explore and identify opportunities. Right. And, uh, and as I was exploring, you know, the, the NFT space. I was sort of realizing as I went that there were a lot of, um, I guess, centralized downsides to how a lot of it works. Uh, you know, the, the number one issue is uh, decentralized metadata, and that's not something that we're tackling, but it's sort of a good example of how there are still issues that need to be solved from a technical perspective. Um, and so, you know, as we were looking into what the opportunities for marketplaces are, we saw a lot of gaps in terms of the actual 
reliant on the company that creates the exchange for a lot of the people that use NFT exchanges. And it sort of, um, I guess, didn't really make sense to me in a lot of ways because I, I also went into doing a lot of research on the traditional art industry and how you know galleries and art auction houses work and uh, you know I've, I've talked with people at the Sotheby's Institute and and um, the Deloitte art art division sort of just trying to understand what the differences are and what the real opportunities are and uh, and it sort of just didn't really make sense that there are still centralized platforms sort of just trying to emulate what the real world looks like and you can kind of see that in DeFi too where there's a lot of platforms that sort of just look at the real world and say, how can we copy that onto the blockchain? And sometimes it works well. And there are definitely, it's not like universally a bad thing. You know, it's like there's, there's benefits to that. But I think a lot of the key behind what makes the NFT space so exciting and promising and, uh, and, and, and valuable long term is that there is this sort of self-sovereignty that's associated with it and this ability to dictate your own direction, you know, take advantage of your own creations and dictate the direction and the evolution, and the experience of how those things are, are I guess, put out into the world. Um, and and so what, I, what we saw with a lot of these existing exchanges and after having conversations with NFT artists and creators and collectors was sort of, there's a lot of platforms dictating the way that you get to do your exchange. Um, and, and dictating the way that, dictating who gets to do exchange, dictating the way that you get to do that exchange and sort of putting together, um, I guess, a, a, a hard framework for how that works. And that didn't really make a lot of sense to me, given the, uh, give, given the way that I, I think most of us agree the NFT space should evolve and the real benefits that blockchain provides to digital art over the way that the existing art world and art market works and collectibles market and of course, you know, um, other other types of NFTs, but that was sort of the the I guess the main inspiration behind it, um, and and even you know I guess just to emphasize that point. And last thing, I, I ramble on, so cut me off if I'm uh, if I'm going going crazy. No, no, but, you're uh, good. You're good. This is this is good info. Cool. Yeah. So one of the uh, one of the things that I talked with um, with this guy at the Sotheby's Art Institute about is he, he was he's an art business professor and he was we were talking about it i was sort of asking him what he's seen evolve over the last 30 years and one of the things that he was talking about was were these sort of um art investment funds where you can contribute to a fund and they'll i guess invest in art and you'll sort of have like a, a share of, of that art and that's sort of a more recent development and one thing that he was saying is that the vast majority of these haven't worked because there and, and this this is true with other art technology as well which is they've sort of tried to create a way for it to work where they kind of put it in this box and they say, this is how it's going to be. This is the framework for it. And, you know, that's how it's going to be done. Um, and one thing that he's seen over the years is that the more you try to place art and collectibles and sort of more experiential things into a box, the less that it actually is, is has the potential to succeed because it's just such an experiential thing and such a multifaceted you know, different ways of exchange, different reasons for exchange, you know, all sorts of, I guess, facets to it. So you really can't put it into a box. And uh, and that's sort of, I guess, the, the decentralization, understanding the, the opportunities that NFTs present over the existing markets, and then also understanding the need for there to be multiple channels and multiple ways of doing this. And, and uh, I guess, versatility in the way that these platforms operate was really the inspiration behind DNX. Awesome, awesome. I encourage everyone in the audience to to get some good questions in. Uh, you know, this topic and this project is still pretty new, and um, you you can get a first hand account of what's going on by asking uh, Aiden, you know, directly. Pretty much, uh, he's in the stream text channel. So if you see if you see a good question, uh, you can go ahead and 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 kind of answer it. Um, a question that that everyone here wants to know is, well, what do you collect? What do you collect and what are you most excited about to use DNEXT uh, for in your collection? Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm still too, too poor to, uh, to, really, to really get any of the, the top tier art um, that I've been really looking at. One of the guys actually, shout out to WG Meets, uh, I had a great conversation with him the other day and uh, I think he, he's doing some really cool abstract stuff, which 
I know it's sort of maybe a less popular thing in NFT art, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, and I think, I don't know, to me, I think ab abstract art sort of speaks to me a little bit more because it's sort of, you can kind of get into your imagination and, and decide what you want to experience. It's kind of like music, you know, it's like with music, even if a song was written for a specific reason or a specific, you know, theme in that person's life, you can always take it and, and kind of use it for your own life and compare your own experiences to it and, uh, and sort of make it your, your experience through their music. And I think abstract art kind of gives you the same opportunity, although I guess all artwork is that opportunity. Um, but I'm, me and a couple of friends are also uh, pooling together for NBA Top Shot. So, um, which I, I know is like not really decentralized and not really, I don't know, I don't want to hate on Top Shot too much. Like they're doing, they're killing it. And, uh, and I love the, I guess, global adoption. It's getting NFTs. It's pretty cool. But um, I don't know, from a technical perspective, I think there's some some downsides to that ecosystem, but that's okay. You know, it's all, we're all figuring it out, right? So, um, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, definitely shout out to WG, a uh, longtime friend of mine and, and a fellow countryman. So shout out to WG. Yeah, yeah you're saying you're from New York too, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, New York and uh, Dominican, and he's he, I've yeah I know from time to time see what what the art landscape is looking like from an artist's perspective. So much love yeah. to him. Yeah, um, yeah, really cool. All guy. right, do you kind of want to jump a little bit into into the into the technicals and and possibilities? Um, yeah, hundred percent. Maybe in a in, in in the most in the most basic, uh, so that all of us yeah. can maybe uh, follow and understand. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm not the technical guy. My co-founder is the technical guy, so I, I, I conceptually oh, understand it, but uh, I won't be, I won't be going too deep into that. So no worries. Um, but yeah, so I guess there's there's a couple key things that that we're really trying to emphasize here, um, and it all sort of sort of centers around what I was saying about trying to keep it, you know, decentralized, open access, and as customizable as possible. You know, m multiple options and. That's sort of, I guess, I guess it's all a part of our roadmap because we are so early right now, but there's sort of the short term and the long term things that are part of our roadmap. And um, on, on a short term, from a short term perspective, um, we're really trying to build out exchange contracts that are versatile and they're versatile in their ability to handle multiple ERC-20 token types, um, in addition to multiple ERC-20s within the same transaction. So, um, so this is sort of something that that I think is pretty new concept and something that we've been thinking a lot about. And it sort of, again, reflects sort of this self, self sovereignty concept that I keep hitting on and that I think is sort of important to the space, which is the NFT space. One of the reasons I think it's so important, so valuable and so you know different from the way that the real world works and blockchain in general. And this was sort of how we came to this idea too, was, was you, it's really about taking the the creators and the like for DeFi it's the people who have the money being able to leverage their own money again right um it's the the people with that are the creators of the value being able to also capture that value and and so you know DeFi that's people being able to take advantage of their banking banking structure and, and you know self-control over their money with nft that's i think that's with nfts and especially with nft artwork i think that's people being able to take advantage of capitalizing on the experience behind their creations and and you know, the, the monetary benefits behind their creations and sort of, I guess, having more control over the way that their ecosystem works and dictating it in their way, right? So instead of having to go through galleries to sell your stuff, and instead of getting zero royalties when it sells in the secondary market, you've got this opportunity to, you know, have that be a custom experience and, and and sort of decide how you want your creations to exist and flow through the world and so a, a part big part of that philosophy that's sort of an immediate feature something that we're working on immediately within our, our platform is the global erc20 compatibility um and then the multi erc20 compatibility so the global erc20 compatibility will let anyone list any nft for any token um just natively so that's obviously you could just always keep pegging it with to ethereum um and that's probably how the majority of people will do it especially if they're secondary sellers um but obviously stable coins are important too and other platforms can use stable coins as well that's not something new but 
Um, but having that ability to choose any stable coin you want to use is important. You can also use it speculatively, so you could list it for some other token that you're you're interested in receiving, um, instead of having to go through the process of selling for Ethereum and then converting it. Whatever gas fees you have to pay to that other token, you can just request that token straight in return for that NFT. And then the other use case is social tokens. So, um, and I, I think social tokens are going to continue to grow with this industry. I think there's something that's really interesting and important about this industry. And so th that basically it enables artists and creators to have their own social tokens and really have a solidified use case for those social tokens. Um, one thing that we talk about when we're when, when we're trying to figure out tokenomics and that everyone is it's really important to obviously figure out the intrinsic value behind the token. Um, there are some. But yeah, so I was just saying the, the social tokens, right? So it's like it's giving the use case to the social tokens where people can use our contracts as their own marketplace, essentially. And um, and you can start to really have that use case and that demand generation for your social token, which obviously, you know, if the supply is lowering and demand is increasing, your social token will, will go up in value. And so it gives that sort of duality to that. And, and it's kind of... Um, it's kind of part of the strategy, right? It's, it gives you some ability to make strategic decisions about the way that you're going to sell your NFTs um, and, uh, and, and and sort of use that as your governing strategy behind you as a creator uh, instead of, I guess, being beholden to the platform and, and the, the platform's ways of doing things. Um, so that's kind of the, the immediate number one feature um, that we'll be rolling out very short term. And, uh, and, and there are some other platforms that can handle other ERC twenties, um, but you have to request the team to add them. It's not just you know native access. You have to have some special permission from the team, um, and and then there's no decentralized governance behind that. So, again, it's sort of permissioned access to that customization, and, and sort of we you know we let you, we are going to allow you to to, to sell this in the way that you want to, which is kind of just defeating the purpose of the, the ecosystem as a whole. Awesome. I, my, I'm sorry, I had my mic muted. Um, yes, <laughs> social tokens are something that are getting more and more popular. Um, people like Terry Crews uh, just launched a, a token um, under the roll under the roll brand, just like Whale. And um, this is something that you can definitely see a lot of people getting behind. And if if you're there to kind of uh, provide a utility for it. Um, for for that token and the, uh, alongside with NFTs, it's also booming. Uh, I think your project has definitely got some huge, huge potential. Um, um, yeah. What is it looking like in in terms of of development? I hate to I hate to put you on the spot and ask that no, question. No. Like, like you know, we want it now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But no, uh, no, no, I, it's all good. Everyone, yeah, it's like a classic question that goes up, comes up, so no worries. Um, so yeah, so right now we're working on on staking contracts for our token. Obviously, our token launches on Monday. So we put together this sort of custom um, token pre-sale contract, which is like multi-round, multi-price point, um, based on a, a um, open Zeppelin contract. So it audited um, library, I guess, but our own custom touch to it. And uh, you can find that on our, our GitHub if you're interested. Um, and then so the, and then the next step really to make sure that we can retain the value that we, we generate from the, the token launch is to have staking contracts and reward people um, and either in DNX or in another token um, for for being a liquidity provider and, and sort of maintaining that momentum. Um, my my co-founder at the moment is working part-time on this project. So he works full-time at a blockchain company and um, we're just, we're, we're keeping him anonymous or semi-anonymous for now, just because it's kind of, um, I guess, just for work related reasons, we wanna make sure that everything's all good, but uh, but once we we launch our token um, and generate some some momentum from that, we're both going to move full time immediately. Um, looking to hire someone on the front end to just help out with that sort of thing, which is actually I was <laughs> I'll make an announcement about that next week. But um, but and then and then the roadmap for that looks like probably within within three to six months. Uh, within three months, probably test net, and then within six months on um, mainnet. So. Um, and, and that's including, we want to make sure that we get an audit done on these contracts. You know, it's not cool to, to leave people's, uh, valuable stuff up, up to chance. So that's definitely 
uh, in our priority on uh, the roadmap. So very cool, awesome. Um, we hope to have you back uh, when 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 things are rolling, or even you to. know before we can see stuff and and throw all our NFTs at it. It's gonna, I'm <laughs> sure it's gonna be I'm sure it's gonna be wild. Um, I, just from looking through your Twitter real quick, uh, and this 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 uh, last thread that uh, you guys posted recently, um, it, it really you guys are are heavy heavy on the decentralization aspect of of, of the blockchain. Um, uh, just to read off a quick bit of uh, of uh, of this, um, let's see, uh, no no locking requirements are going to be needed. Um, uh, your, uh, your contracts never require you to lock the con uh, lock lock your NFT in the contract unless uh, the sellers of the platform require it or would like it. Or how does right. that work? Yeah, yeah. So that's sort of um, so, some platforms do that. Some platforms don't do that. So that's not really like a, a major highlight. But um, I, I mean, it's important. It is important because I think uh, you know. Again, if you have to lock your your, it, it's it's again part of this like centralization technique that sort of tra more traditional businesses use, which is if we can force people to have to use our ecosystem and not have any other options, then then we can sort of capture that value and just make sure that we snuff out the competition, you know, whatever. But, you know, it's uh, I, I think it's important to give people that flexibility. Again, it, it just goes back to that self-sovereignty concept where we want people to be able to have their their nft listed on our platform as a home base but have the freedom to list at other places have freedom to sell it directly to other people in other places there shouldn't be that kind of competitive reason to make it a worse experience for the sellers you know it just doesn't really make sense so yeah. um so that's sort of like the, the the governing principle behind that and it again it's 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 not even that we want we don't want to necessarily be a, a platform that competes with other existing platforms we want to sort of be a home base for people where they can feel comfortable having their 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 nft and creator presence exist and then have people be able to do transactions through us but ideally keep it as unique to their brand as possible um and this is this is sort of something that we're looking into as we go forward and that we've been talking to some creators about which is the options of integrating our contracts with people's own websites and, and the opportunities for us to to have people have complete control over their brand instead of it being at all associated with our brand. Um, and I think that's something that's really important that, that is going to need to happen. And, and, and it's going to be a, a technical challenge to do that. But I think we've been looking at some options and some possibilities. I think it, it's something that will be possible. And, and so that's something that's especially important, I think, to me and I think to a lot of creators that we've talked to is, again, that self-sovereignty concept, keeping it associated with their brand. because. There's great reasons, and this is one of the things I don't want to rag on other platforms because there are great reasons to have curated platforms. There are great reasons to have, you know, drops and, and special auctions and and, uh, and and all that sort of thing. So it's not it's not about ragging on these other centralized platforms, and it's not even about saying that there can't be centralization within the blockchain environment. In some respects, there has to be, but it's about when you are trying to create your own brand and evolve your own brand and 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 sort of have that control over the way that people experience and exchange your nfts you should be able to make that your custom experience and you should be able to make that happen in the way that you want it to happen so it's yeah that, i mean that's really again just the governing philosophy behind this is you know as a, as a business owner i don't want to be associating you know dnex with you know any other platform that we have to you know use as a tool or, or anything to grow the business and and from a certain perspective creators are running their own businesses you are trying to sell your your creations and have your own experience behind that creation and so you should be able to customize that ex the exchange experience as well cool um and that's something that uh a lot of people are passionate about um one of the one of the points in this thread is also um no kyc no verification um, right. And that's something that you know. As we have more and more creators jumping into it, um, jumping into the, bl the blockchain space in general, and one of the reasons that it was created uh, with Bitcoin was was uh, for um, access for all, right? Right. So uh, having having your platform completely open 
um, really lets uh, smaller creators or creators from countries that might be blocking certain things um, just just the opportunity to participate and really be part of this 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 renaissance because I think it's it's fair to call that uh, a run this whole thing uh, that's going on now with art a renaissance because you see just so so many people creating from all corners of the world and if we want them to participate and, and join us in the marketplace and join us in these communities they have to have access so is that yeah. is that something that you kind of had in mind when when building yeah, one one hundred percent. It's it's all about making sure that people have access to things when they when they want to have access to things. And you know, it, it's funny because I think there's been a lot of discussion recently around you know freedom of speech and openness of platforms. And um, and I'm not really here to make like a political stance on anything. Uh, you know, I don't really um, have any strong opinions to voice on that. But um, but I but I think when it does come to to creativity being oppressed in certain countries and create and, and sort of, you know, not being able to create artwork in the way that you want to having governments tell you that you can't do that. That's just like, that's not okay. You know, like it's, it's the creativity of the human mind and you should have the freedom to express that creativity how you want to. And the blockchain should be sort of a, a tool for enabling that freedom. Um, and I think we're, we're, we're given a unique opportunity right now to have this platform develop in the way the pl platform or sorry space as a whole nft space as a whole but also just blockchain space as a whole i think there's really a uh an opportunity here for us to make sure that it happens in the right way and i think that if it doesn't happen in the right way it's going to be a very long time before we get the opportunity to have an environment that really gives fulfills on the promises of freedom that people have wanted for a long time. So, um, okay. I'm sure that uh, a lot of community members that that are also all around the world um, can appreciate these things. Um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, uh, let's uh, let's see. Uh, most recent example, something like uh, the flow flow token on, on that blockchain launching, uh, everyone in the U.S. was uh, blocked off. So that mm -hmm. sort of immediately puts people at a disadvantage. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if right. things launch equally fairly for everyone, um, you know, it, it should be it should be better, right? Hundred percent. And that's and it's kind of funny too because. Like you can block people from going to your front end website, but you can't really block people from on the Ethereum network. At least you can't really block people from interacting with your token. It's not like I'm, as far as I'm aware, there's no way for the government to really block that. So, you know, it's it's just kind of legal jargon and it's sort, sort of just doing things for the sake of doing things to say, oh, we're trying, you know, this is what we're trying to do. But, you know, I don't know, it's like the NBA is predominantly in, in the U.S. and you know their their token holders. I'm sure are the the majority of the interest for that token. I'm sure is in the U.S. as well. So um, it's kind of and and there's nothing that they can really do to stop people from from getting it on decentralized. Or I guess that's probably not true. I'm, I don't want to speak specifically to the flow flow use. Right, right, but, right. For, right. for ERC twenty tokens in general, right? Yeah, so I mean it's that. it's um no no projects uh, fault fault. You know, it's uh, whatever their local legislation is. Um, kind of have to go by that, and it must be real tough um, trying to launch a project and and you know it's good and you know it's hot, and then you you have to go through this hurdle. It's like, oh man, you still want to, you still kind of have to put it out, right? You already put so much work into it, yeah. but then to be to have the brakes pumped, uh, that must be something really uh, disheartening. Well, it's it's something that kills startups, right? I mean, even. With traditional startups, any illegal issues will just kill the startup. And you can put years of work into something that just gets torn down, not even by your own, you know, doing. So, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a concept of fairness, right? I guess we all have our opinions on the concept of fairness, but yep. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to get overly uh, political. <laughs> no, 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 I think I, I feel like we all understand, the, you know, the the the, the issues of, of the current world today. Yeah, um, we are having some questions filter in from the community. Uh, one of them has to do with uh, the DNX token. Right. Um, wh what are sort of I don't know if you 
kind of touched on this already. What are going to be some of the main use cases uh, for DNX on the platform? Yeah, definitely. So we, yeah, we haven't touched on that yet. So um, I guess the, the so, so one of them that we're working on immediately that we're going to roll out immediately or as soon as possible is uh, staking. So that and that's sort of just a, I guess a light use case. It's not really a um, it's not really like a intrinsic value use case, but it's something that can help, I guess, drive the value of it and ensure the value of it. Um, so that's sort of going to be one of the first things with our token. You can stake it. Liquidity providers will get rewards for providing liquidity to a pair. That's important just for base level having a solid token exist. Um, then sort of the next steps, one of the things that we really are, are passionate about creating is a decentralized governance model. Um, that's been something that we really are focused on with our token is, is ensuring that there is decentralized governance. And there's a couple of reasons behind that. Um, I guess that there's a lot of philosophy and theory going around with, with DAOs and with decentralized governance. But um, one of the one of the things that we really I think is important to our project and important to having a decentralized exchange is that decentralized governance. And I think it's important because it allows creators and collectors and investors to have an opportunity to participate in the development and, and suggest features and actively contribute to the process. And I think that's really important because if if we're trying to make an environment that is really a lot better, a lot more open, a lot more, you know, accessible to the NFT community as a whole, it's important that the NFT community can contribute in telling us what that means to them. And I've had a lot of conversations with, you know, creators and collectors, et cetera, and we can just do user interviews and do that. But I think, I think at the end of the day, the, the most powerful way to, to make that happen is for people to feel like they're able to contribute to the development of the platform and, 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 and not just feel like it, but really be able to contribute to the development of that platform. And, uh, and, and through those suggestions, have the opportunity to, uh, Sorry, I was getting notifications here. I'm not good at splitting my attention. But uh, that might be from the Discord. I just dropped the I just dropped the link to your uh, to the DMX uh, Discord and our Discord, so people can kind of jump in there. That might be going a little bit crazy right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. No yeah. I got to turn notifications off. It's that little noise, you know. It's like, oh mm -hmm. man. <laughs> Uh, this is awesome. But yeah, no. So yeah, again, it's just the decentralized governance aspect. And there, and so I guess there's a lot of question marks around exactly how that will be rolled out. And um, primarily the way that we're going to approach that is for the first, the way that we've set it up, essentially the team members tokens and the, the, the community, the vast majority of the community pool are going to be locked up over three years with 20% released in the first year, 30% released in the second year. 50% released in the third year, all distributed quarterly. Um, and that basically, the goal with that is we will have, Brian and I would, will have a majority stake in, in the platform at the beginning so that we have the ability to dictate, you know, quick decisions, make quick decisions, roll out the V1 of the platform quickly, you know, get, get to where we need to go um, really quickly at the beginning. And then as the tokens gradually unlock, and the community will have um, complete, you know, complete control over how the community pool is distributed. So the community will eventually, after a year and a half, surpass us in terms of governance, and then it will slowly, you know, just by the the curve of of token release, um, become a DAO model. And I think that's probably the most elegant way to do it because, you know, it, I think it is an important factor, an important part of what we're trying to achieve here. It is it is important that people have that decentralized governance um, as you know as a part of as a part of the the environment and, and understand that that's something that we're passionate about and that we're want, we're willing to deliver upon. But again, there needs to be quick decision making at the beginning. Um, and uh, and so I think th I think we've set up a really good model where after a year and a half, we're, a we're, we're able to make those decisions quickly. Obviously, you know, we're, we're not like the entire time we're doing user interviews and, um, you know, I'm already looking to set up conversations with people. Um, ahead of ahead of this and it'll all be based on on needs and use cases uh, you can't base it on anything else right but um but th that rollout will eventually reach the point where it's completely community governed and uh and at that point you know it's it's in the hands of the uh of the community as a whole and i think that's an exciting day i think it's something i'm looking forward to actually so Okay, interesting. That also kind of, I, I've never, I don't think I've, I, I'm not that I'm a, you know, expert on DAOs, 
but um, I don't think I've seen that type of uh, rollout before, which also kind of puts some, um, uh, not pressure, but, um, you know, you guys kind of have to have to put your, your foot on the pedal to to kind of get what, you know, to, to, to launch the thing in, in the direction that you want to see it go in, at least in the, in the first uh, years. And, and then, you know, before you kind of let it go to the community. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, 100%. Uh, that, 100%. that dynamic. Yeah. And it should, and it should be like that. It should be us putting ourselves out there and, and, um, being beholden really to the, to the community as a whole. Um, we, we see this as more of a, a public good than anything else. And, uh, and I think it should remain that way. And I think, you know, obviously, and I think we have a lot to prove to the community that that's something that we really want to, to, to have happen because there are question marks around exactly how it's going to be deployed and how it's going to be upheld. And all of that is something that we need to think through. Um, and I'm not going to say that we have all the answers, right? I don't think anyone has all the answers. Um, and there's so much research being done around what the right DAO model is um, and how to properly execute that. But I think I think that we, we have to prove to the community that that's something that we are willing to do and we are willing to to listen and actually execute on 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 those promises. Um, and, and that's just up to us. That's up to us proving. So. Cool. It's, it's almost um, like having a child, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> the kid, the kid does have some self-awareness and and might even yeah. make may make might, might even make a good argument for wanting certain things. And, yeah. and and you know as it grows up and all that good stuff and it starts making its own decisions so but you have to kind of you know go to school do this do that yeah <laughs> yeah 100 100 that's exactly exactly what it's like <laughs> interesting but, you know, um is there yeah, a, at a, a certain name? point it, it has to grow up and at a certain point you have to just say you know it's uh it's out there now and uh and honestly that's like something i mean you know i i have somewhat of a, a background previous to this in, in entrepreneurship and uh and I, I think it's something that i've always really thought is a strong point of a good of a good team is the willingness to be replaced and the willingness to have your decisions at a certain point no longer have effect you know and um like i, I think that's something that i've always been been cognizant of is if you ever create a company that's good enough to become a multi-billion dollar company and there's a better better CEO than you to be leading the charge on the continued growth of that company. You, you I don't think you really should get in the way of that because you know it's like I was talking about this with um, with uh, Second Realm the other uh, the other day actually. It's like it, I think it's I, I compare it a lot to um, I think our art is the same way although I'm not a visual artist but I, I am a musician and it's a lot a lot of it's the same way when you create music. I can have these different ideas of I want this melody, I want this harmony, I want this these drums, and I hear them to, like in my head together, and I think that they're all going to sound good together. And then when I put them on the track, it just sounds terrible. And at a certain point, you have to listen to what the song is telling you. The in the initial kernel of the idea can be yours, and the philosophy behind it, and the you know the the goals behind it. But at a certain point, it's going to tell you where it wants to go. And I think that's sort of the balance of of the founding team is sort of figuring out when do we resist where it's telling us to go and when do we just get out of the way and let it happen um i think that's a big part of my philosophy uh, uh, as an entrepreneur and i think it's something that's really underappreciated in entrepreneurship and, and in music and in and, and life is you it's really a lot of things are not in your control it's really when do you choose to stand and fight and when do you choose to get out of the way and let it happen cool that is definitely a, a good way to look at it and something that, you know, like you said before, everyone's trying to figure it out now and um, uh, very, very uh, early web type stuff, like what's working, what's not. And then and then we kind of all find find our our way. Um, so uh, I'm excited to see, you know, what 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 you guys branch out and then maybe other people follow your lead because it sounds like a good yeah. one. So, so definitely yeah. excited. Um, what uh, kind of segue on on that? What are you excited about uh, seeing people use uh, DMX for? Um, what 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 has been the most vocal? If 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 maybe you can't touch on what you want them to do, <laughs> what has been the most vocal use case for for DMX at this moment? Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's sort of what I what I was talking about a little bit earlier with the. Uh, um, 
with the keeping the brand true to whoever's creating the brand and sort of bringing it back to being centered around the creator and not centered around the platform. Um, that's really the, the the goal behind it. I think that's the most exciting use case. And I, I think that actually that, that touches with something that I haven't I haven't talked about yet, which is related to the global ERC20 compatibility, which is something that we want to roll out um, in, in version one if possible, which is this, this multi ERC20 token compatibility. So being able to assign multiple options for ERC20 payments to a single NFT. Um, and I think that is really interesting and really powerful because that gives creators the opportunity to do things like give discounts if people pay in their social token, but still open the door to Ethereum transactions or stablecoin transactions or whatever else. That's something that I'm really excited about because I think forcing people to use your social token is a strategy and it's a strategy that you can decide to use, but there it's all just how you decide to execute your own strategy for your own sale. Um, and that's, I think the important thing behind why, why we're, we're creating that, those, those features again, right back to self sovereignty, right back to the philosophy behind this. It's important that people are able to dictate how they want the exchange to happen of their own, of their own tokens and to try to provide as much infrastructure as possible for the customization of that. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's like something that I'm really excited about actually is the, is ideally trying to execute on this, this multi-token use case. Um, and, uh, and just, just giving creators the ability to, to sort of have it be their own exchange, their own strategy, their own experience and how it, how it's rolled out. Awesome. Um, you know, uh, Ethereum is sometimes referred to as the, the world computer, uh, yeah. and, um, Getting these uh, this functionality now out of one single token, it should be a huge game changer. I I heard briefly one other um, example of this, not not necessarily with payments, but um, it's really opening the door to to creators. Um, they 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 have an NFT, but it's a it's a little app as well. Um, it's a little app that they can uh, take with them anywhere and. Uh, and, you know, so, you know, it, it might so happen that it has a, a, a beautiful picture attached to it. Um, but I, I'm excited to see what what creators and, and, and this new empowerment uh, means uh, or yeah. can mean. Right. Um, yeah. You know, being able to pay in, in certain tokens and, and discounts that that all sounds extremely fascinating. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's I think it's early too to be really saying that we know how this is going to go down. I, well, I think everyone would agree with that, but it's like, you know, I think, I think where we're still at with the NFT space is not, is still figuring out the best way for the infrastructure to exist. It's not, it's not figuring out how to build upon that infrastructure in the best way yet. And, and but I think that we're getting close to the edge of that. So it, it's us trying to provide the best version of that infrastructure for people to build upon to sort of jump that hurdle from, um, from, from infrastructure to use cases uh, and, and provide provide people with the ability to be creative in their own right with how that's deployed instead of us saying we think we know how this should go down okay i love that that you guys are uh you know doing your best to make it completely completely open but uh the power lies really within uh the creator because yes you have this open this whole open thing but yeah you can maybe list your things for sale for five currency but you can also block out other ones um so you know uh the 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 openness really lies uh with the creator first the platform is the platform but the creator chooses where 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 this thing where where it's going to live how it's going to interact with the rest of the chain and the rest of the community so um 100%. huge possibilities man um <laughs> i i um i invite everyone to uh click on the discord link uh jump in there i'm sure that they can get a little more detailed, uh, you know, more than what we have time here for today, and um, also the Twitter link and all that good stuff to to be caught up to to any new breaking news. Um, uh, is Telegram something that your community is currently uh, a very uh, that uses a lot, or would you say Discord has the most traffic? Um, probably Discord, but it's. I I think Discord has a little bit more, but Telegram is still a good place to go. It's it's actually funny. There's different people on there on on them, you know. So, uh, which right. I think is kind of 
We've got yeah. maybe, if I if I dare to say, maybe more of the artists on Discord and more of the investors on Telegram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I think it's more of the, the DeFi crowd is on Telegram. Um, right, right. Okay. Not necessarily, uh, yeah. I mean, DeFi people are can be artists too, right? But it's uh, you know, just different different use cases. But we actually we have a link tree, so I can I can drop you the link tree, um, and that'll probably be the easiest way to just get all of our our links. I just dropped that in there and um, uh, so people can, you know, I, I've just been pe cherry picking <laughs> the, the links, but the link tree, you know, get, get it all in one spot. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, so, you know, you are three to six months uh, or about right for, 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 for some type of product, but um, with all this new hype, in in the nft space uh not necessarily i think the, the most hype thing right now is the nft space um you know where has where has attention come from that maybe you guys didn't realize it uh from before hmm. or you know some interest that you're like wow uh this project or maybe this person or we didn't think of that yeah um the i mean it's it, uh hmm. It's not really like a low key, low key project. I think um, I think Pranksy is doing some cool stuff, and uh, and, and I guess uh, Blau too. I think is doing really cool stuff with sort of trying to create their own brands around it and not really being assigned to, to any other platform. Um, I think they've done really cool stuff with again keeping it true to their their brand. Um, there's been a lot of interest from from DeFi, which honestly, when we started working on this project, like it was like. It's, it's been like almost five, six months, I think, since we started working on it and uh, and, and like conceptualizing it and having conversations with people and, and NFTs didn't have this much traction when um, when we were doing that. And it's been a lot of a lot of tra traction from the DeFi crowd recently on on getting excited, excited about NFTs, which is really cool, really cool. I think I, I think one of the cool things about NFTs that are that's developing so quickly is We've got people from DeFi and traditional crypto coming in, learning more about it, getting deeper into it. And then we've also got people who have never even used crypto before, never even used DeFi, never even bought a token coming in from the other side on stuff like NBA Top Shot. Um, and, and, and those people, and it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm getting a lot, actually a lot of attention from, uh, from friends of mine that are just getting into NFTs that aren't even DeFi people that have barely known about crypto and that are like, I, I got, I got like, Five, six people sending me the uh, the, the um, uh, kings of uh, kings of Leon. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that yeah, I had, like, article. Yeah, yeah. So I have like a bunch of friends sending me stuff like that all the time now. It's, it's just cool because it it feels like um, it feels like to the fact that we're all sort of working from home and and not out and about. The digital world has gotten more important over that this period, but it's kind of felt like um, I don't know if you felt this, but it's felt like there's been sort of not as much content online and not as much it, it, because I think a lot of the, the content was relying like YouTube stuff and like movies and TV shows are relying on, on people being able to physically create stuff. Um, and so and like, I, I'm just talking broadly about the experience of the majority, right? Cause it's not necessarily experience of a lot of people, but, um, but I think this is something that's really being catalyzed by the fact that people are spending more time online, more time at home at the moment and seeing these cool collectibles and this, this cool artwork digitally that they can sort of relate to and they can understand the experience of uh, a little bit. And I, I think that's something that's really, really been cool about this whole, I guess the last couple of months is the, the real momentum that I think we're all feeling behind that. It's developing really quickly. Uh, yeah, we kind of had this major shift in, in the way we live day to day and um you know the way we consume and interact with content kind of got turned up on its head as well where where where, where finance people are now seeing value in things like art or collecting digital art and and vice yeah. versa like you just said um yeah it, that's it, that's something that's interesting too actually i can touch on that briefly mm -hmm. yeah um that's something that I think um, there's there's room to explore, um, explore the, the different possibilities behind. It. So I, I don't know if, if you're familiar, but in the traditional art world, people buy 
people are able to buy artwork as investments and then you can donate them to a public space or donate them to a, 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 a museum or wherever and you get tax benefits because of it. Um, and so you see in the lobbies of banks, these art pieces, because um, from what I understand, they're getting tax benefits from not being in a public space and displaying it there. Um, I think it's like, I think it's the value of the piece of art amortized over five years or something crazy like that. It's like, it's a lot of tax benefits. So um, that's yeah. kind of, uh, yeah. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because that's something in the traditional art, work, art world. And I, I'm not sure if anyone has tried to make that argument or tried to claim tax benefits from a piece of NFT art yet. And, and it's sort of like, it's one of these kind of like contentious topics, you know, because a lot of people from the traditional artwork world are feeling like NFTs are an opportunity for transparency because in the traditional art world, there isn't a lot of transparency. Um, and, and there's a lot of really high level rich collectors that are sort of dictating the way that the market exists. Um, and that's why you've seen, even if you've seen prices of, of sales going up, you see, you see like, um, I mean, they, everyone defaults to the DaVinci that sold a couple of years ago for $450 million, but you see the sale prices of special pieces going up because it's these mega rich people and, and, and companies that are bidding on these, these pieces. Um, but the actual total revenue of the art industry has fallen. Um, and that may have changed in the last year, but at least over, I think from, from I think 2016 onward, it, it fell um, every year, even though the price of, of auctions were going up. So. But this is something that we, I, I don't think is really, we, we're seeing it a little bit in the really top people, top artists, top valued artists in the NFT space, getting these crazy mega bids on their stuff. Um, and then, and, which is again, something that worries me and the whole the whole purpose behind our, our um, no verification requirements is the more that you sort of verify and reward the top people, the more it just starts to resemble this traditional art world again. Um, and, and sort of this crazy, crazy valuation from the top people and then sort of not much for the people down below, um, which is why we want this no verification requirements and why we want sort of a more simple environment that doesn't necessarily reward the top sellers, reward the top buyers, but kind of just distributes things evenly between everyone. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to see if people can take those, if, if there's the same opportunities for tax benefits in the NFT space as there are in the traditional art space. And if people that that would generally buy traditional artwork start to um, start to buy digital artwork for that same purpose. I, this is just me thinking out loud, but I think it's something that'll be really interesting to see the evolution of. Yeah, I mean, I'll join you. I, I have a crap ton of very early crypto kitties that I would love yeah. to donate to some preschool somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't get, get a couple backs, a couple bucks back from Uncle Sam. That'll yeah, that'll be the day. That'll be the day. And exactly. Well, yeah. And, and again, it's and then it's that sort of the whole DeFi side, too, is is instead of just banks and the ultra rich being able to do that, let's let normal, normal everyday people do that, too. Like like we should be able to take advantage of our own assets in the same ways that everyone can. Uh, there shouldn't just be those opportunities to the to the top one percent. So um, yeah. I think that'll be something I think I think the financial side of NFTs will develop a lot over the next year or two. I think that's sort of one of the the less touch things because people have looked at um at sort of like like bonding curves to nfts and trying to trying to use you know like a, a liquidity pool with nfts and that kind of thing and like maybe you could wake up work for like 1155s but and maybe you know because maybe you could just have it round up for slippage or something like it's kind of weird but i but i think that sort of people have been trying to compare DeFi to financial opportunities in the nft space which is kind of i, I think it's a different beast altogether it's just a whole different thing the financial side of it so um, but i think over the next couple of years we'll see uh using you know, using nfts as collateral or um or or, or financing nfts um, and these are things that we're looking into too, by the way, this is some, these are things that we could, we could potentially do, because this would be something that would be helpful for, for any artist, but even super high value artists to have on their own platform, the ability for people to finance it through them, through a smart contract, um, would be something that would be interesting to have and potentially generate more, more sales for artists on their own platforms. Um, but, but even, um, even, even traditional auction house concepts like, uh, third party guarantees where I can basically guarantee that you will sell your piece of art for at least the minimum reserve price. 
then if it doesn't hit that reserve price, I'll pay you for your art and I'll get it. But if it does hit that reserve price and goes over, I get 25% royalties on anything over it. Um, stuff like that. It'll be interesting to see if we see that sort of thing evolve. Um, and uh, yeah, I think maybe, maybe the space needs to mature a little bit before that's a possibility. Who knows? But but it'll be something I'll be keeping my eye on. And I think uh, I think we'll see some stuff some stuff happening there. Okay. Um, there's definitely been an influx of uh, let's just call them finance people, right? Um, so yeah. one of the one of the benefits is that when they do come to this and discover this and and maybe try to play by the same rules that they're used to that it's now much more visible to everyone and we can say no no or you know or you know yeah. it's it's or we can just mirror and and kind of take advantage of the same things that they're so used to taking advantage of right. uh, all all this time so i i i want to so. see like you know we can also do different things but if you know it, there's, there's been there's finance people that have been in the in the game for for way too long for for some of us normies to to understand. But if we can just mirror, or see where these angles are, or or even stuff like that, like oh okay, if if, if now all these uh, 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 old, old traditional art people have been donating and doing stuff like that, if they come here and try to do the same thing, well now it's for everyone, right? Yeah. Um, we can't really. You can't really say that. Oh no, it's, it's only for for a regulated investors or whatever. But uh, if it's on chain, yeah. then it should be for everyone technically. Exactly. Right? Um, exactly. And if it's not, if it's not, you have people like like yourself and, and Dnex trying to make it so right. Hundred um, percent. Yeah. I'm excited about what, what you mentioned with Pranksy because the this seems like something that's right up his alley because he yeah. he is he is his brand. Um, and yep. he's not tied to any platform. I've, I've seen him flip his way through through a DAP game and completely make it his own. Um, so, given the power that Dnex can can like uh, afford to him uh, and a few other individuals in the space, uh, I mean, we've got to be we, we should be getting ready for some really next level cool stuff happening. <laughs> Uh, let's yeah, see if we I, have, definitely um, so. I definitely hope so. Let me see if um, we have another question here from the audience. Uh, are NFTs on DNX linked to the other platform or are collectors allowed to list their acquisitions to other platforms such as OpenSea? How does the integration flow work? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's going to be our own contracts initially just on the marketplace. Um, I guess it, um, I, I don't want to try to like confuse the the vision and the short term development too much because I, I know I kind of cycle between them and in my mind it's like constantly those ideas are all connecting together so it's kind of I, I, it's hard for me to break it down sometimes but um, but more long term I think thinking of the platform as that home base and thinking of it as a place for people to to keep their own brands and and to not be associated with any brands it will definitely be important for on our platform people to be able to link to other marketplaces and other places where where their things are being sold you know auctions whatever um and that's not something that we shy away from it's not i'm not afraid to 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 link people to another platform because oh like i might not you know capture that value or whatever um i think i think it's it's not i, I think our our goal is not to be competing like I, th I think i said this earlier but our goal is not to be competing aggressively you know cutthroat with every other platform out there um it's it's not like that it's more it's a whole different philosophy behind what we're doing um so the the but the initial the initial smart contracts will obviously be our own and they'll, they'll always be our own but people will always have the ability to also list their nfts on any other marketplace that doesn't require locking and also to send it directly to other people um but and i'm not sure necessarily what you mean in terms of integration because our contracts will not necessarily integrate with other marketplaces. I think OpenSea does some stuff like that where they actually link back to um, to, to the, the marketplace's own own integrations. Um, that's something we'll have to explore. I'm not really sure if that's something that we'll actually do or not. But um, but in the beginning, it'll be, you know, our contracts. And then as we develop, you know, as it develops as a place for people's brands to exist, we can start to link people to other places and integrate with whatever and uh, and, and really try to, you know, make it the user-centric, seller-centric environment it needs to be as much as possible. Dope. 
Um, very cool. Uh, we we've now hit the hour mark. I want to know if yep. you had any uh, like parting remarks or or maybe maybe a light bulb went off in your head while as we were talking. <laughs> um, uh, what do you have? What do you have uh, to leave us with? Yeah, I, this this is a total curveball and a little little uh, philosophical thing that I was thinking about uh, the other night actually, um, which might be interesting. And it's just about self sovereignty in general. But people that are into that kind of thing might find it interesting, which is. Um, one of the things that I, I've noticed over, over time is um, business tends to, business and, and competition between individuals um, from a uh, like, like mental competition between people tends to favor those that don't react emotionally as much to situations and can react more logically to, play, to, to situations. Um, but, what but as people become more self-sovereign and their own agents in the world and less reliant on other other platforms more reliant on themselves are we going to get to a point where people are losing that sort of human emotional reaction to things um in favor of being more strategic against every other human because you know it's kind of like it's i'm just it's sort of just a thought on how our mentality will evolve over time but Right now, we sort of have companies that are, you know, tribes of people that can still be emotional within, but just their reaction to the outside needs to be logical. Um, but as people become their own self-sovereign individuals, I think I think the strategy will still favor those that can be logical in, in, in a traditional sense and, and sort of um, compete like that. But will that make us move away from our ability to really show emotion and be emotionally invested in things and react emotionally to emotional situations or is it going to favor those that are able to control that more um i think it's interesting i think especially in the context of, of art and uh and 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 things that are inherently emotional it'll be interesting to see how that evolves i think you just uh gave us a definition for DeFi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you see people moving as an organization or a DAO, right? Uh, and then, uh, you know, trading emotionless, emotionless uh, is one of the big factors that, that can make you a good uh, trader in DeFi. But I love I love having these type of conversations where, um, you know, we're kind of, we're, we're explaining the project, but also uh, just putting out our ideas and and yeah. breaking it down what it means to to us right um because it it's it's definitely not going to be the same thing we're thinking today is not going to be what it is tomorrow but it's it, because right. these conversations exist we kind of can build off of them and see the next the next day or the next thing so um I'm, i appreciate you for for coming through and and, and giving us yeah. your time telling us about your project what you're working what you're working on, what we can expect. Um, uh, there's, there's no, there's no boring days in, in this, in this blockchain space. No, there are um, <laughs> So I, I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone in the audience that took some time out to ask uh, these really great questions. I am going to drop the Discord link again in the chat, so you guys can run up in there and ask uh, Aiden and 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 the mystery founder, <laughs> what uh, you know, uh, how 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 this how this new thing can benefit you um yep. definitely uh stay tuned for the dates and, and all that good stuff on the token launch and yep. and then uh aiden promised you'll be back right 100 100 percent. i'd love to and thank you guys for having me you know uh token launch is on monday and we'll see how it goes um fe feeling good and hopefully uh brian won't be anonymous for too much longer so uh we'd love to both be back on 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 this at some point and uh and yeah keep talking to you guys in the whale community you guys are awesome it's amazing that you guys are doing stuff like this important in its own right you know so uh so thank you so much for this really appreciate the opportunity thank you thank you I, I again much appreciated uh for your time and uh gearing up i guess for for a token launch on monday sheesh it. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i'm gonna go ahead and uh end this broadcast here you can hang out uh for a second and uh we're just Everyone watching on Twitch, Periscope, have a good one. Everyone watching on Discord, catch you later. <laughs> Peace Thank out. You guys. Appreciate it.